Hello everyone, welcome back to another Watch Me Do Math video. In this video I'm going to be reviewing a bunch of textbooks for IB higher level maths, physics, and chemistry, three subjects I'm about to take my exams in in about two months. If you're new to the channel, this is Watch Me Do Math. I make weekly maths, physics, or chemistry videos, tutorials, videos on teaching and learning, and I've been predicted to seven in these three subjects, so I hope that you might stick around to hear me out and consider my opinion when you reach a decision about how you might approach these subjects, whether you're studying them for the exams coming up like I am, or learning them for the first time and embarking on your IB course next year. So, the these three subjects are subjects which I have pretty strong opinions on the textbooks thereof, except for perhaps physics. I'm not so strongly minded about that. But anyway, let's begin. So this, this is the Oxford University Press Higher Level Maths Analysis and Approaches textbook. This was the first textbook that was published for the course. Uh, my year group was the first year group that was doing this course, except for November 2020, I believe, although I may be wrong. Anyways, this textbook was published around May 2019, and it was possibly the first textbook that came out in time for schools to put on their book lists which is why a lot of people may have it. In my opinion, this is just my personal opinion, by the way, but I think that this book is not very good um, for the learning of IB higher-level maths analysis and approaches in studying this course and so on. For one, it has, at least in the first edition that I got myself, it had a lot of uh, English and grammatical errors. It made the book slightly unclear to read and use, and finally, the actual mathematical content in there was not very helpful at uh, actually teaching you how to do stuff, right? It did serve as a reasonably good source of practice questions for you to like use in solidifying knowledge of the topics that you learned elsewhere, but to be honest, this book is really not great. and unless some really significant changes have been made from the first edition that came out, I would not recommend buying this book uh, to anyone. If you come to this book um, with the intention of learning a particular concept, you are likely to come away disappointed because the book often does not offer um, a well-grounded explanation of what you're doing and instead may or may not give you an example problem and solution to walk you through what is actually happening when you're solving a certain problem, but overall I really don't think it's very good uh, as a resource for this course, and it only, to me at least, in my view, it only has its use as a potential reserve of practice questions if you need a lot of practice questions to use later. So this kind of helpfully segues into the next book I'm going to look at, which I think, by contrast, is a much, much better option for people uh, doing HL Maths a and The book by Hesa Mathematics, Hesa Mathematics, not sure how to pronounce it, um, I think it's pretty excellent in the way it presents the mathematical content. Um, I used it myself to study topics like um, like basically all of linear algebra as it appears in the IB course. So the solution of uh, m times n systems of linear equations, that topic um, had a really good chapter in here. It also seems to go a little bit beyond the IB course in the sense that there is some content which is either not in the syllabus, um, although that's not very much, and there is also the sense that this book pushes you to a level of doing maths that is slightly beyond um, what you may even need to deal with in the exam. Do I think that's a bad thing? No, absolutely not, because um, math is a pretty linear subject, you can progress through it, and if you are ahead of where you need to be in order to get a 7 at the exam, you can be much more confident about your ability to get that 7. Additionally, some strong points of this book in particular are the chapters on proof and reasoning, so it dedicates a very large amount of space to proving techniques, things like proof by induction, proof by contradiction, and 
I think it's very helpful because proof is not something that is covered in any depth or length at previous mathematical qualifications. And so if it is your first time approaching maths as a subject in which you need to prove things, um, you may find that this book is very helpful in getting to your feet on that. Yeah, so overall, good book. I would, well, I mean, you, you have to consider whether the price is worth it for you, but if, if given the choice between this book and the Oxford University Press book, I would pick this book every time. Secondly, the questions are also just pretty good. Um, the Oxford book's questions either have errors in them or the answers are uh, missing or simply wrong. The work solutions that they put out also aren't very good at all. So this, this book is likely to be where it is at for you if you want to take HL Maths. Next, we look at, um, that's a revision guide for physics, um, Cambridge's the Cambridge University Press IB Physics textbook. Um, I think this is fairly good. I don't have any strong feelings on it either way because, as I said, um, it, with regards to physics textbooks, my opinions aren't that strong. That's partially because I just had a really good teacher and we didn't actually need to use the textbook that much. So the in-school resources were quite good, meaning my opinion is not super developed. But for the one chapter that I did consult this textbook to help me understand it, it seemed to work very well in intuitively explaining um, the physics concept that I needed to know. I think it was a mass defect or something along those lines. The first time I was introduced to that concept, um, it took me a little while to grasp it. But this book did well. And secondly, we have the Oxford University Press physics book, which I also think is reasonably good. Um, I don't think there are any big gaping flaws in this book, uh, similarly to the Cambridge one. I'd say perhaps the Cambridge one is slightly better at explaining concepts if you're trying to learn them for the first time. Um, but overall, both these books are fairly good. And I, I do like the fact that both these books seem to have a lot of um, extension material in the sense that it puts IB physics content in its context in the sort of world of understanding physics yourself. Perhaps I'll be able to make more comment on this when I actually go to university next year and um, embark on my physics course, which I'm more likely to meet the conditions for at least my insurance, if not my firm. Although I am pretty optimistic about meeting the conditions for my firm choice on UCAS. The other thing is, oh, I've moved to the wrong subject. Yeah, so basically, this does give a, a good treatment of IB physics. And it helps you sort of grasp where IB, IB physics lies in the wider realm of physics you actually learn. Because um, one criticism of the IB physics course that I have in particular is that it's kind of cowardly in the math that it asks of you because the IB is designed it so that it is meant to be possible even with the easiest math course which is standard level um, applications and interpretations or I say easiest it may be easier or harder for different people but it is the the least intensive the least analytical and IB physics, like the people at the IB organization, want this course to be able to be taken by absolutely anyone. And I think that holds it back a little from um, letting people experience physics for what it is, which is just like trying to model the real world, right? And math is the language that you want to create those models in because of its uniquely a uh, unique power at describing, I don't know, the, the, that whole chain of criticism of IB physics is uh, something I might work on more in another video, but remains to be seen um, what my final thoughts on that are. So this 
course book does have a corresponding revision guide, but I haven't actually looked at it, so I can't give you an opinion on that. I can, however, give, an, give you an opinion on SOCOS's uh, Physics for the IMB Diploma Exam Preparation Guide, and suffice to say, it is also pretty good. It is all three of these physics textbooks and re or, or books in general. These resources are pretty good, so you could um, sort of go to your school library or go to your public library and check them out and see which one just better fits your personal style of um, learning and understanding and get that one because I don't think any of these have big problems. So, and finally, we move to some chemistry books. This one, the Pearson Higher Level um, Chemistry Textbook, I think it is honestly really good. If you have a teacher who is not the best at explaining new concepts, um, or if you are just trying to charge ahead on your own and learn the concepts in higher level IB chemistry before you meet them, this book is certainly a book for you because although some may criticize it for being extremely long, it is longer than the Catholic Bible <laughs> even, like it is just a huge freaking book. It is over a thousand pages, even though it, in, it does include all of the options content as well. This textbook is very good at explaining um, new concepts from the ground up. It takes its time and space in order to do so well, which, I, which is something I really appreciate because it, no one actually reads a textbook from cover to cover. It's just that you can consult it whenever you need and there will always be uh, or like almost always be enough information for you to figure something out which is something I really like about this book so you can sort of treat it as a personal Wikipedia dedicated to IB higher level chemistry that you can carry around with you and indeed treating it like that is probably the best way to go about using it because obviously you wouldn't want to go through all 1000 pages yourself but if you do have a problem this book is very helpful at helping you understand it. And then finally the Oxford University Press Chemistry Revision Guide. I think this is a reasonably good book. I think it does a very good job of condensing a lot of um, chemistry into a small amount of space because it is a revision guide after all. You don't have to have the same um, verbosity as a as a textbook because you are expected to sort of know what you're looking at before you get in here. Though it does help to see a certain topic condensed down into a smaller space because I think it stays in your, like if more stuff stays in your short-term memory you can more easily make the connections between it. So I don't know, this, this also kind of serves as a course book but not really. If you are using it to revise chemistry, I would be very careful about using this as your only source for information because sometimes there are factual errors in this book. However, overall it is a pretty good book and I would, I don't know if I would recommend someone to buy it. I'm not going to make any comment on that, but it, if you have access to it, it's certainly a good resource. Alright, so that's, that's pretty much all I wanted to say in this video. I was just going to make this video about high level maths, physics, and chemistry. You can see that there are economics tabs open in my browser, but um, I've decided not to go for that because um, I am SL and may lack the perspective that someone taking HL economics is doing, um, has. And at the same time, it's also like my, my understanding of economics is not as solid to the point where I can actually make comments on the um, general usefulness of teaching resources. Like I know which ones are personally more useful for me. For instance, um, both the IB Economics in a Nutshell Revision Guide by Eli Tragakis and the IB Economics Textbook by Eli Tragakis are um, so both books that I find really helpful. but. Not necessarily the case that everyone will find it helpful. I can't really make any general comments about it because, again, it's not my it's not my area of expertise. 
in the sense that I know it well enough to criticize. Because and I, I don't really have any criticisms of those two books that I do use, apart from the fact that they are a little boring to read compared to the GCSE textbook. Because they are quite long and very monotonous. But that's something for another day. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. If it does help you, be sure to subscribe and share this video with your friends. Hopefully it has provided some valuable info input to you if you're looking to figure out which books you're going to use in your revision or in your studies. And until next time, thank you for watching.